Valentine's Day is right around the corner, so I figured we would go over how you can make yourself a little Valentine's animation for your significant other or anybody else. So before I jump into how to go about doing this, I wanted to point out that I do have a YouTube membership now. So if you guys are interested, there's some cool perks that you can get along with it. So there's two tiers that I have currently. The first tier, you'll get my sub badge along with a special Discord role, and I will occasionally do some content drops. So that's some cool perks for that one. But the second tier, will get all of those minus the occasional content drops because they will get all of my project files, uh, at least where they're applicable. So if I don't have the rights to something, then I'm obviously not going to redistribute that. But everything that I have the rights to, like this scene that we're going to be creating today, you can get through the tier two subscription. So check those out if you're interested. Let's go ahead and jump in here and create this animation. So to start off, we just need a geometry node. So we'll drop that in. Go ahead, dive in, and we'll put down a file node as well. And let's go ahead and navigate to our object here, which is just going to be a spline. So I created this in a 2D application because I like the way that splines work in 2D applications a little bit better. You can also make them inside of Houdini if you want, but it's not as good of a tool set, in my opinion, as the tool as a 2D. So you can export from a 2D application as an SVG, and then you can go to Blender because Blender is free. You can just import your SVG into Blender and export that as an OBJ and then bring it into Houdini because Houdini doesn't really have an import for SVGs that works super well like Blender does. So from here, we just need a transform and we're going to move the centroid to the origin. And then we just need to set down a poly fill. So I'm going to fill this object in and we'll just do a simple single polygon for now. And we're going to go ahead and reverse that as well. And then from there, we just want to extrude this, give this a little bit of thickness. So let's go ahead up that a little bit. Maybe, you know what, that might be good. And then let's just go ahead and put a poly bevel down. We want to bevel the edges here. So maybe something like that. Give it a little bit of thickness with a nice little bevel to it. And then we need to create the back of this because right now we only have half a heart. So we need to drop down a match size just to make sure that we're on the origin, which is good. Just set this to min. I actually have that set to my default when I put down this match size node because it is basically the, the only thing that I use this node for. And it works phenomenal. So let's go ahead and do a transform as well. And we're going to rotate this in 180 degrees on the Z axis. And then we're going to just merge those together. And then that gives us our full heart, but it's not actually together right now. It's not one object. So we need to fuse these together and I will drop that there. And now you see, as I flip between these two, you see that the line is now fused together and all of our points that are set on the origin plane are now fused together. So this is a one full object. So from here, in order to get the look that we're going for, we need to get rid of this big polygon in the center. We need to just kind of evenly distribute some polygons across the entire object. So you can do this a number of different ways. You can use the exoside quad remesher. It's a great tool. I love using that. But for this purpose, I'm just going to convert it to a VDB. So we'll do VDB from polygons. And we'll set this to something low, maybe like 0 0.007. It's not a very big object, so you can go pretty low and have it look pretty good. And then from there, we want to just convert the VDB back to polygons. And now you see that we have some polygons evenly distributed across our object here. And there's a little bit of randomness to it, which kind of gives it a little bit of a unique look. And if you want to change the size of these, if I change this number here, it's going to change the size of the polygons. So I'm just going to set that to 007 for now. 
And then our big node here, which controls pretty much everything is going to be the attribute wrangle. So let's go ahead and wire this up. So in here, we need to do a couple things. First of all, we need to be able to visualize what's going on with our noise that we're going to create in this application or in this, uh, this node, I mean. So we want to create a color because I, I don't think I actually used the color in the render, but you can use an attribute inside of something like Redshift and get some fine control and some good, good looks uh, using the noise that we're going to create. So I'm gonna create a float, so F at, and then we need to name it, so I'll just name it color. And then equals, and then we need a noise. So from here, we need to give it some attributes. So we're going to give it a value, which is going to do our position. So we want to get the position of our faces and we're going to add the frame number. So plus at frame. And then we want to divide that by a value to get the speed. So this is going to affect the speed of our animation. So we'll do chf because we want to be able to control this. So chf and then create the attribute. So we'll do speed. And then we also want to be able to control the scale. So we want to divide this whole thing by another float that we're going to create. So we'll do, like I said, a scale. And we'll just end the line off there. I hit control and enter. We should have some stuff going on. And then I can create these values. So the speed, we'll look at it here in a second, but scale as I start to change that, nothing's actually happening. If I go over to the geometry spreadsheet though, you can see as I change the scale, it's going to affect the value of our color here. So we wanna be able to visualize that. So I'm just going to set that as our color. So we'll do at CD equals set. And then we'll just do at color for all three of our values because our color is a vector. If I hit control and enter, now you see we got some stuff going on. As I lower this scale down, you see the scale of our noise starts to change. And if I click play here, this is going absolutely crazy right now. We're going to just click real time animation. And as I up this, maybe to something like 100, it's gonna slow down quite a bit. We'll up that to maybe like 900. Now we get some cool little animation going on here. And let's just maybe set the scale to something like that. Gives us a cool little animation going across our heart here. And you can also go in and change the values uh, for these attributes inside of our parameter interface. So you can go in there and then change the default ranges. Not gonna do that for the moment, but you can do it in yours if you would like. And then the last thing that we need to do here is set up a extrusion uh, value for the next node that we're going to use. So this will make sense here in a second, but I'm gonna create a float. So F at, and then we'll call it extrusion scale. And we'll set this equal to, let's go ahead and just pause this. Go back in here and it's disappeared because we didn't finish our thought in the wrangle. So we'll do um, at CD because we need one of our values. So at CD.R and we're going to multiply this by a channel ramp that we're going to create to give us a better control over our extrusion scale. So we'll do extrusion, call it extrusion underscore ramp. The underscore will make a space in between our two words and the name of our attribute here. And then we also need to feed this channel ramp parameter one of our values. So we'll do at cd dot r. So it needs a value from zero to one to remap two. So if I hit control and enter here, looks like I have screwed something up. What did I miss? Extrusion scale, let's see what it's saying here. Oh, that's because I didn't put a period, I put a comma. So 
if I put that correctly. So now you see that we have our heart back and let's go ahead and leave that alone for the moment and let's just drop in our next node which is once again a poly extrude node. And actually there is one other thing that we need to do in this attribute wrangle. We need to run this over primitives instead of points. That's going to allow this extrusion scale to actually work. So from here, we want to just give our extrusion a little bit of distance, but we don't want our entire object to be extruded the same. So we want to run this over or divide it into individual elements instead of all one piece. And maybe we'll just drop that back down a little bit. Ooh, not that much. Just up it a little bit there. And then we want to come into our spine control and we're going to change the thickness ramp. So you can change this to whatever you want. As I drag this down, you see I start to get some spaces in between these polygons, which is kind of the look that I'm going for. So something like that ought to be okay. Uh, I also need to go into this local control and go to this distance scale. And this is going to control how each is each um, face is being extruded. So I'm gonna set this to that parameter that we created called extrusion scale. And nothing is going to really happen here right away other than we lose our extrusion. And that's because we don't have our ramp created. So once I create that ramp, you see I got some stuff going on here and our object is getting a little wavy and weird, which is good. That's what we're looking for. So I can add some points into this now, and you can see I can start to remap some of these values. If I bring this one down, you can see I can do some weird things and really just kind of push up these values and kind of get some weird kind of cool looks going on. And if I want to, I can just, I wonder if I can select all, whoops. Doesn't look like it. Let me just select all these real quick. And I'm going to change them all to B spines because that'll give us a little bit nicer of a curve going on. There we go. So that changes our look a little bit, gives us something a little bit nicer. And now as I play this, you can see it's going to slow down our viewport a little bit, but we get this nice kind of a, a cool look kind of moving across our object here. And I can pull these in, whoops, not the whole thing. I pull one of these in and I pull the values down where well, we can really start to exaggerate some of this. And maybe I don't want to set these to B-spline. Maybe I just want to keep them as linear and you can get some interesting looks by just changing the values and the interpolation between the two values. Gives you uh, some cool different looks. So play around with those. That's kind of going to be the gist of it. And then if you do want to just give that little pop-up animation, pretty simple to do that. Just drop in another transform. And then we're going to rotate this 90 degrees up. And then let's set this to, I think I had it at 270 frames here. So we'll alt click on the rotation of the Y as well as the translation of the Y. And then we'll go up to, actually we'll go to the end and we're just gonna alt click on those again. We'll go to like 90 frames, so about three seconds in and we will, whoops, maybe move that up by one full unit and we'll do a rotation of 360 degrees and we'll need to alt click on those as well. And if I go ahead and play this now, see we get a nice little animation going on, animating our heart up as it's spinning. Gives it kind of a cool look. And then we can go forward to, let's see, 90 frames before our end would be 180. And we'll just go ahead and set this back to one and 360, so the same values that we had at our 90 frames. And now as I sit here, it's just going to sit there and our animation is gonna play across it and then it will slowly go back down. 
And if you want to go ahead and change those values in the way that that is animated on or off, you can go ahead to the animation editor and just kind of adjust these handles however you see fit. But I'm going to leave that up to you. That's kind of the gist of the whole animation. Just need to go to your preferred render, set up some materials, maybe a backdrop, and you're all good to go. But that's the, the gist of it. Like I said at the start of the video, I do have memberships available now. So if you want to support me more, there are the ability to get these project files uh, through this membership. It's a tier two subscription. It'll be $5 a month. I do have a lower tier as well. I think that one I set to $3. And for that, you get a special Discord role. You also get that for tier two. And that will give you access to my discord is actually free so you can all join the the discord but you won't have that special role as well as access to some free content drops if you have a tier one subscription tier two will get you all of my project files like i said so if you want to get this you can get that through there so hopefully this tutorial helped you guys out and you learned some cool stuff to do with vex as well as maybe you can create something for your significant other so Anyways, if you like the video, make sure to you give it a like if you find it interesting and you want to learn some more Houdini. I do have a bunch of other Houdini tutorials on my channel as well as some Redshift, uh, some Cinema 4D stuff, some Clary stuff. So if you're interested in any of that, make sure you guys check that out. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.